in Aikido, I think people have to understand that when they think of the application of Aikido in real life or on the street, they have to understand the concept that Aikido is a self-defense martial art. You would attempt to use Aikido techniques or Aikido uh, concepts in a, in a combat situation in like in, in at, the last, at the last moment when there is just a need to protect yourself. You would not be using Aikido in a, in a bar fight to start a fight because Aikido is a non-combat martial art. It is not a sport. It is not a sport like Judo. We do not have uh, rules of engagement and points and techniques that will score you a certain point. So the application of Aikido comes from a self-defense point of view. Now, also people have to understand that to become very good at self-defense through Aikido, you must have many years and many hours of practice. It just doesn't come like that. I, th I tell people, if you, and as you, as you mentioned, if you want to learn to fight, you pick up boxing or, or another striking martial art like Muay Thai, and then you learn a fighting skill. But with Aikido, after years of practice, techniques become second nature. Learning to, to step in and out of, a, of, a, of an attack is actually a life skill, also physical, but also mental. If someone attacks you verbally and you do not want to engage in a, in, in a fight, in a verbal fight, you learn through Aikido, I think, through the concepts of Aikido, how to dodge a confrontation and maybe save face on both sides or maybe save everyone from an embarrassing situation. But Aikido can be used, I believe, in real life street defense, but to do that, and this is, I think, where some Aikidoka fail. First of all, they fail to understand that Aikido is for self-defense. So you would not go and say like, okay, hit me, let's see who's, who's stronger. <laughs> so that there, there's a concept misunderstanding there. But for an Aikidoka to test his techniques in a street um, scenario, they need to remember, they need to practice that with a non-compliant partner in order to become street effective. Because in Aikido, the uke, is compliant. There's a harmony between the two. The idea is not for me to catch you unguarded and to punch you in the face. On the contrary, for me, as uke, as the person who attacks you or to, who engages you, is to help you improve your technique and reach an understanding of, of your bodily motions. So this is maybe sometimes you see, and it is true, and we have to admit it, that we sometimes you see Aikido practitioners picking on um, another combat martial art, a striking martial art, and they don't do that well. And I think my opinion is because their understanding of what they're doing is wrong. And Aikido is for self-defense, but it's more than just a physical fight. It's also a mental game and a spiritual game and a, an inner peace game, right? Learning how to breathe and control your breathing, breathing in a, in a stress situation. So I think this is where the application, like technical application on the street comes. And then of course there are the health benefits and the, the self-esteem benefits and the, the benefits to your, you know, to your own image, both mentally and bodily. 100% Mignan. Yes. As you mentioned, uh, difference between a striking martial art. I remember I was in Thailand and I was talking with a friend who uh, she was practicing Muay Thai. And she said to me, you see that Tai Chi, or it's a martial art. Well, uh, Muay Thai can be considered a martial sport. So the engagement is different. Then with fears of practicing Tai Chi, I understand that building my personality, building my confidence, making myself stronger, I can find solution of conflicts, let's say not fights, conflicts, because every fight it's a escalated conflict. 
in different ways. And actually every day when there's a situation of conflict, I analyze it and I think what is, what is the best solution of avoiding it and arriving to a resolution that both parts will be a win-win situation, will win both. Because destroying something, there's no winning in that. As you said, we need to control emotion and then we, we bring an inner peace. Then um, if we want to fight with Tai Chi, I would say uh, that to take Tai Chi into a fighting uh, cage, I would say that people, they need to train for that. And then uh, depends on someone's objectives, but then they will uh, go to a more like surviving skills. Because Tai Chi can bring us uh, if I am to take the application, which everyone understands the Tai Chi application, it's how we use a technique into fighting. Well, I extend this notion of application and how we take Tai Chi into life. So taking this technique of how I defend myself, how I use this to, it's how I turn a situation more likely, turn my situation in my own advantage, following the Taoist philosophy that says, we should not oppose the flow of life. On the contrary, we should join it and flow together. And then we will flow with minimal effort. We will save our energy. This is what is Tai Chi all about. People, they should understand that Tai Chi, it's a method of saving the energy. As we save a battery or any device that uses energy, we can go further, we can go longer, and we can experience much more. We can enhance ourselves on many levels. This is Tai Chi. This Tai Chi. I think we reached a very good point where we can, we can present our understanding of the philosophy of Tai Chi and Aikido and what philosophy we, what philosophy these martial arts propose. So what is the uh, main philosophical concept of Tai Chi Chuan? Main philosophical concept of Tai Chi Chuan, it's yin and yang, the perfect balance. <laughs> in between extremes, in between, uh, you know, the, the, the power side and the, the um, how can I say, the lack of power, the emptiness. It's called in Tai Chi, fullness and emptiness. You see, uh, I would say sun is beautiful. Well, we cannot appreciate sun if we don't have the night, if we do not have the darkness, if we do not have the coldness. So Tai Chi, it brings awareness, another, way of defining Tai Chi is complete awareness. So as I practice, I exchange this energy with the partner and I realize in some situation, I am strong. In some other situation, he's strong. So we need to create a balance. So I need to be confident and relax as in Aikido to, to face these situations when sometimes I'm not strong, but I, I will know how to manage it well, not to lose myself, not to, to control the body emotion that we, you mentioned. So it's self-control, it's um, what are the three characteristics of, uh, of a Taoist practitioners? It's humility, uh, awareness, and generosity. So I have to be all these three in all situation. Sometimes I was talking with, uh, with my sister, my brother-in-law, they are also fascinated uh, with the Tai Chi and Kung Fu techniques. So I said, look at these monks, the Shaolin monks were, they are full of uh, knowledge. They know how to solve a fighting situation. They know how to, to solve a life situation. And they walk on the side of the road very humble. We have to keep this, this attitude to understand that life around us, it's all very big. So how can we, we enter into this universe other than being humble? So these are the principles that I can, I can withdraw, you see? Also, when we learn something, we need to understand and we need to apply on ourselves. As we learn how to apply, as we learn how to use it better, we, we really get a grip in, into the way. You know, Wu Wei, it's the, the Taoist principle of, of all things. And it's yes. said in Taoist philosophy, Someone who claims that's a master of Wu Wei was mastered by the, by the Wu Wei. So actually, there's no full master. It's all us to be humble in front of this and to learn, continue learning, continue perfecting ourselves. That's how we get closer to the truth. 
the yeah, philosophy of IQ. <laughs> oh, hi, hi. He he understands some of the training methods, and he sees a witness of many many sessions, and uh, he is quite wise right. for his age and size. <laughs> size. You are saying so, me, yeah, sorry. The philosophy of Aikido was crystallized by the founder of Aikido, a Japanese man called Mori, Morihei Ueshiba. And yes. unlike Tai Chi that has different families that grew Tai Chi and, and Kung Fu into different kind of branches and schools, in Aikido we have one founding master, one founding father, Morihei Ueshiba, he was born somewhere late 1800s and passed away mid late mid late 1900s and in the aikido you know community he is also known as o sensei the great teacher great teacher and in aikido he basically synthesized his understanding of the martial arts that he practiced throughout his life he he traveled around Japan and learned from different martial arts masters and from different schools. And he reached to a point where he had his own understanding of what martial arts are. And to him, and I will quote now, he said that the philosophy and the goal and the objective of Aikido is true victory, final victory over oneself here and now. You see, it doesn't mention anything about hitting an opponent, about, about overtaking an opponent, but actually talks about yourself and how you must reach victory over your own self, physical, mental, spiritual. And as in, as in Tai Chi, there is a level of awareness because he said, and I quote, here and now, be present in the present, know your environment, understand yourself, understand the environment. And then by extension through techniques, if you are in a, in a combat situation, you will be able to def defend yourself. Because Aikido for him remained a self-defense martial art. And he was totally against creating a sport out of Aikido and creating a competition out of Aikido. The same way it happened with Jiu Jitsu and, and Judo, which Judo is now an Olympic sport. So the philosophy of Aikido, if I were to summarize it, would be defend yourself, self-defense. And at the same time, protect the attacker from injury. That's why in Aikido, there is a symbiosis, a, a, an understanding both physical and sometimes even energetic between uke and tori, between attacker and the person who's, who's doing the technique. Because the founder, Morihei Ueshiba, opposed violence and opposed aggression. And if people understand that, if they walk into the dojo and they see Aikido as a self-defense, non-aggressive, peaceful martial art, then they understand the true meaning of Aikido, especially that Aikido has the character I, which means harmony or yes. love or unity. And so if I am this is, this is my understanding of, of the philosophy of Aikido. Wonderful. And if I am to add one more thing, it's uh, starting with the words of one Tai Chi master that said, uh, Stillness is the mastering is the full motion. And then uh, Lao Tzu said once that um, we are so being stable and facing all adversities or all situation of life. And yet Lao Tzu said that nature doesn't rush and everything is wonderfully, perfectly accomplished. So one value that Tai Chi promotes is patience. We should learn how to be patient in all our training, in all our uh, solving life situations. And then we will be always what is called a winner, what is called someone that uh, 
is in control. Being, in, as you mentioned, being in control of ourselves and being present here now, it's awareness. I'm aware that what happens now, I do not live in the past and I prepare myself and uh, the environment for the future, for a better future. Preparing for a better future, it will only can lead us to a better, uh, better life, to a more harmonious way of living. As harmony, as as yin and yang, or as a I I key I key do concept, it's uh, that should be the basis of uh, all these things. And of course, Tai Chi is a martial art. It has a, a side of fighting, uh, but it's a friendly fighting. After each game, after uh, each match I was having with one of my masters, we were ending everything in a very friendly manner. We were having tea together and we were saying, we are doing this not for, um, you know, practicing our strikes or uh, that's no such a way. And uh, we were doing this to, to, to cement, to, to enhance our friendship. And also you see the Tai Chi technique of fighting, it's being very stable, very strong. And yet if someone wants to attack us, the technique that we will perform will, will uh, return the attack with the same intensity. So if someone will attack us with a little intensity, our, uh, our replica, our counter attack, uh, our retaliation will be with the same intensity, not so strong. So Tai Chi, it's actually, a reflection of ourselves or a reflection of the world into ourselves. It's a very philosophical concept. Yeah. Yes, in conclusion, I would also like to mention that although Aikido seems very, very fluent, very fluid, there's a lot of movement in Aikido. When you walk into a dojo and you see people practicing, there is also stillness in Aikido. As you mentioned in Tai Chi, in Aikido, there is also stillness and actually training begins with a short, a brief period of meditation in Seiza when you stay kneel down on, on, the, on the mat, on the, on the tatami, and you practice both your breathing and also you're trying to clear your mind for, to prepare yourself for the coming practice session. So there yeah. is stillness at the beginning of a training session and then there is also stillness at the end of the training session where after the master calls Kei Koji as in like set up your, um, your uniform and go into Seiza, line up and kneel down in, in a kneeling position. And again, fold your, your arms and close your eyes and try to regulate your breathing back again to a more relaxed and maybe a more stable breathing after, you know, after your physical effort. So there is stillness in Aikido too. And I, I love that, but also maybe it's one of the very difficult parts of this martial art. Because yeah. to stay still for a minute, half a minute, some masters would even make you sit still for five, 10, 15 minutes, apart from the aches and pains on, on your knees and on your back, your mind is also running wild. So it is a, an amazing self-awareness practice. And it is very similar, I believe, with what, what Tai Chi Chuan is trying to achieve through Qi and meditation. Uh, yoga also, to a very large extent, tries to teach practitioners to regulate their breathing, their posture, and also their thoughts. I was saying, yes. All these, they are part of the whole. All these complete each other, all these arts. And all of them taking separately, they, they act as a whole. So this is a wonderful concept of wonderful, of union. As you said, harmony and union, I, Aikido. So this is also Tai Chi, this is also Aikido, this is yoga. All these methods, they take us to the path of uh, wellness, to the path of symbiosis, symbiosis with an opponent, with a partner, with a business partner, and so on and so forth, with life itself. Yes. Thank you very much, Michnia. I think, I've learned, this I think I've learned so much today from, from, from our conversation. And I also hope that the, uh, the listeners and the viewers also 
have a better understanding maybe now of what Tai Chi and what Aikido means. And I want people to understand that this is how we see Tai Chi and Aikido from our own perspective, from our understanding, from practice and you know, self-study and reading and our own personality. And I'm pretty sure there are other people out there who have different opinions and we are more than willing to you know, share our, our knowledge and listen to other people's opinions. Of course, of course. Um, I do also a podcast with different Tai Chi masters and uh, of course uh, all opinion is valuable and it needs to be shared and we have, uh, you have your wonderful YouTube channels, I have the Tai Chi International and uh, through all these medias we can share all our work no on knowledge and information with our dear uh, listeners and followers. And uh, I would like to say that uh, I'm very grateful and honored by your presence. And uh, this, uh, all these episodes enriches us uh, very much. We are all happy in Tai Chi International that you accepted our collaboration. And we're looking further to, to, for many more episodes. Same here. And we will meet again next week where we will continue talking about more interesting topics. Take care. Thank you very much, Mikna. Wonderful evening in Beijing. You too. Bye. Bye. All right.